Good afternoon. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. Uh, we're going to go through, is it stay, staying in Singapore financially worth it? And really the conversation is to say, well, how much are you paying in tax compared to other countries or how much are your school tuition and whether or not you are saving money whilst you're here? Um, should be quite a brief webinar, only about 10, 15 minutes long. Um, and we will go through a live case study or a case study um, and I will show you the differences uh, in cash flow and assets and really how we build these financial plans for people in scenarios very much like this. So this was based on an expat living article that we did um, recently and we had, as you can see there, four different cities. Um, and cities were important because there could be tax differences between, certainly for the US, um, in going to different estates. So we use uh, London, Sydney, New York, um, as well as the base of Singapore. We did some estimated taxation. Um, so that's the marginal rates across those particular cities. Um, there will be differences if you really nailed it down to um, completing an actual tax return. So they're a bit more estimation in that. And then we also looked at private schooling or public schooling in those particular cities as well. Again, very subjective. Um, housing and shopping budget is incredibly subjective and it really is down to your own lifestyle, your own choices, uh, how much you want to spend per month. Um, so we just try to pick a, a set figure. It isn't the big thing that we need to talk about within this quick webinar, um, the tax rate is the biggest factor um, in people growing assets or managing their cash flow. So if we flip to this one. Okay, so we have a timeline here and this is the software that we use. We have a guy called John Smith. And in this scenario, he is working in Singapore. He's going to retire. He's going to return to the UK and then he's going to start a business and then he's going to retire and slow down and enjoy his life. So I think his, his business is a brewery. So he's going to start one of those. Um, and then we have a dashboard here. So we have um, goals he wants to achieve, um, income, um, savings and investments. Too much. And uh, cash uh, and expenses, debts, loans, pensions and property. Um, so we can really go through, um, go through it in, in detail. It tr goes into this dashboard. So every single um, column is an income level. Uh, and then the black line is an expense. So in this case, they're buying a property next year. Um, so that's a, that's why the expenses jumps up, and then as you get into different time periods or stages within life, your expenses may change as a result of that. And that's how we build the financial plans is linked to what you want to do. Now we can compare this guy working in Singapore for the next ten years, so not returning to the UK. So if we looked at the timeline again. You can see that there's a lot longer working in Singapore. Still wants to start a business. That's still his goal. Still wants to do that. Still wants to retire. Pretty much the same level of expenses in retirement. That's not going to change. It's just these next 10 years or so. Do you return to the UK and work in London? Um, and we can apply it to Sydney or we can apply it to the US. Or do you stay in Singapore and not pay that amount of tax? Um, which can be a big difference. So if we compare the two. So let's compare to the base plan. So 10 years of working in Singapore, and if we go to assets, you can see in the first one, there's 11 million, whilst this loads. Let's go back and switch to that one. Okay, so working in Singapore, let's go to assets so you can see the difference. So 
in the final figure at age 89 or 90, which is a long way off, so a lot of compound interest being paid and dividends being reinvested, we have 14 million. But if you look at the base plan, and in this period he's gone back and he's worked in the UK a lot earlier, then the compound on that money, the tax that he's paid is actually 11. So there's a big difference in the, in the, the amount between the two, just because he's saving the tax. Um, you can also extrapolate this out by using um, the cost of school fees. So you're going to spend more on school fees or more on um, income tax. Um, in this case, it's just the savings amount that can be, can be used uh, and how much that will mean at the end of the retirement. So it's quite powerful to see the differences between the two when you've worked out these what-if scenarios. And a lot of the planning we do for clients is to say, well, what are all your goals when we've got you want to return to the UK, you want to buy a property, you want to start a business, um, and then you want to retire. These are the most important parts of your plan. Um, and then you start to compare it to say, well, okay, what if I stayed here in Singapore? What if I left and went to a different country? What if I bought that third property, fourth property? And that's the type of planning that we try to do for clients. So just share back to this one just so you can see the difference between the two. Um, and it's a huge factor when it comes to your asset total or your investments. If you want more information or you want to do a plan like this, then please get in touch with all of those details uh, on the screen, um, email, mobile, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter all of those social media platforms. Thank you very much and speak to you soon.